Welcome to The Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I've got big information to get into today. The first thing I want to look at is what the Federal Reserve said and how that's going to affect the next days, weeks, and months in the market. The second thing is banning everything. We are seen as left, right, and center, and that will directly impact you, and it already has. The third thing is the recession indication, what has happened, and what is likely to occur in the next little while as it relates to the markets, and of course, what we're seeing with interest rates. A lot to cover. Let's begin. Here we have it. Powell says inflation is much too high and the Fed will take necessary steps to address. So essentially, he came out with a prepared speech. He reads the speech. And I was watching off to the side here. I have a screen and I'm watching the markets very closely. And I wasn't aware that there was going to be this speech. And suddenly I see this big red candle, be candle being painted. And I looked over and I said, wow, that's, that's a lot of volume. What's happening here? And then suddenly I get my alerts that came up and said, oh, by the way, Powell's speaking and he spooked the markets. So that's what occurred in this given day. What are they talking about here? Well, essentially that the next time around, we could see 50 basis points. 50 basis points, 0.5% would be much more significant because during the financial crisis, that whole period of time, they didn't do that. They didn't go to 50 basis points. The last time we saw that was in the year 2000. So we will see if they do happen to go in this direction. Here we go. We will take the necessary steps to ensure a return to price stability. In particular, if we conclude that it is appropriate to move more aggressively by raising the Fed funds rate by more than a quarter point at a meeting or meetings, we will do so. And this is the forward guidance, essentially saying we are going to do this or we will do this at a later date if this condition is met. And they are quite vague on purpose with that. That's Fed speak, as they call it. But what does this mean? Well, essentially, they're trying to signal to the market they are willing to hike rates more. And the market does not like that. They're hoping for steady and easy. And when we saw the market kind of bottom out, kind of a double or triple bottom point, uh, depending on what you look at, when you, depending on, on the index you're looking at, it was kind of a double or triple bottom right around that time where Powell came in and said, it's going to be 25 basis points. We're going to make sure that we don't get too aggressive, but we want to do it slow and steady. And we want you to know in advance. Markets love that. They went up. And then you have this saying, oh, by the way, 50 basis points could be coming. And it's not just Jerome Powell. Of course, that prepared speech is all, you know, there. I'm sure there's somebody going through that, making sure that he's allowed to say that. Bostic says Fed could do half a point March hike if needed. So we're talking about, you know, a time in which this is, by the way, January 30th, right? Bostic said that. And I think it's important that we look at certain individuals and see what they have to say over a period of time. I found this one. At this time, inflation was getting hot, but the Ukraine-Russia issue wasn't in the news. So it was kind of understood, you know, things changed. Anyway, the whole point is. And that's kind of why they backed off. I found a couple examples of this. Going back from January, saying, well, you know, do we really need to be hiking rates? Well, maybe if we do, it'll be 25 basis points. And then we move into like February time frame. Okay, things are getting hot. We need to get on this. And then by March, it's what, you know, definitely it's going to happen. And there was that almost at one point there was quite certain that they were going to increase by 50 basis points. But that ended up, you know, Things, things change, to say the least, okay? All right, all right. I want to show you what's happening right now. Crude oil has been extremely volatile, to say the least. Crude jumps more than 7% as EU malls Russian oil ban. Now, I don't think, let me just say this. This is my opinion. 
I don't think they're going to do this. This would be, this would hurt them very badly. And that's what I ultimately want to get to. We can look at 7% and we could see the price look right here. This is US ticker US oil. Okay. Right now at the time of this recording, approximately 113. What is it by the time you watch it? I don't know. Who knows? But you can see the price went up from, let's say, you know, somewhere in this range of 93, 94, all the way up. If you include the wick on this candle, you know, it was up, up to about $130 a barrel, went all the way down, including the wick, 90, let's say $93 a barrel again. And now it's at 113. All of this happened. I mean, what day is this? February 28th. Literally in a few weeks, you had this huge move in something like oil. Crazy. What does that do to you? Who cares, really? If you're not invested directly, you might say, ah, who cares? Let me tell you, this is serious. It will affect you. Russia's proposed ban on uranium exports sends stocks soaring. You got to understand here, it's two-sided. Two-sided. Russia is the third largest source of U.S. uranium, accounting for about 16% of total imports. World's top alumina ex, uh, supplier, uh, Australia. So, uh, let me read that again. World's top alumina supplier, Australia, bans exports to Russia. So this is what's needed to make aluminum. Want to take a guess what happened to aluminum? Take a guess. I'm sure you know that it had accelerated rapidly. Really. There was a ship that was due to dock in Australia this week to collect a load of alumina down for Russia. That boat is not going to Russia with our alumina. So just like that. Done. I mean, these things disrupt businesses. They disrupt the freight. They disrupt your life because now suddenly you're you got to realize the prices that you will pay for everything are going to go up what we are seeing right now today as i record this video is the tip of the iceberg it's not the russia ukraine scenario go back and start to unravel this and you see what a mess it has become there are all these different components. We were talking about semiconductors, 2020, 2021. Now it's everything. Everything. This is going to get messier. I don't think I included that in here, but they're starting to put sanctions on China. If this comes out and it starts to escalate, which it absolutely can, you better watch out. That's all I got to say. Okay? You better watch out. Now, let's go for just a moment into another level. I want to show you what's happening to you, the individual. Contributions to euro area inflation. Energy making up a huge percent. You know that. You see that? That's red, the red color. But look beyond that. Below that is food. Below that is non energy industrial goods and then services. Basically, everything is up. The prices for everything that you have to buy are up. It's not just Chanel bags, okay? The real stuff, the good stuff, the important stuff, that has all risen, and it's only just begun. I don't care how many people unsubscribe, how many people give a thumbs down, and how many people tell me off and call me every name in the book. The truth is out there, and if you watch this channel, you're going to find out, okay? At least what I can dig up and what I'm allowed to share on this platform. If you appreciate that, hit the thumbs up. Cheap Russian Urals crude is finding willing buyers in India. India is saying, hey, Russia, we'll do business. We want that discount. Okay, I want to just make it known that India is clearly doing business big time with Russia. Okay. Higher food prices pushing more low-income Americans back to food banks. And this is what really brings me around to this. It hurts just to read that. But that's where we are at today. 
This is a Bloomberg Opinion article that was written. Inflation stings most if you earn less than $300,000 a year. Really? $300,000? Okay. That's almost everybody. Here's how to deal with it. Now, there's a, by the way, I think there's a typo in here, but regardless, number one, take the bus. That's right. You don't get a car anymore in the new world. You don't get a car because you will own nothing and be happy. Don't buy in bulk. I think they meant to say buy in bulk, but anyway, try lentils instead of meat. So yeah, the price of something has gone up considerably. Let's just change. So is that a cost of living adjustment? Or is that you not being able to get what you want? Nobody said this would be fun. Hey, nobody said it would be fun. But you'll be happy though. Really? This is the kind of thing. And this is what I talked about on the previous walk and talk video that I did. I love to do the nature walks. I've been doing those a few times anyway. Thank you to those who watched it. Not many people watched it. And I said, they just printed the most amount of money they ever have in history. And you can't even eat what you want. You can't drive a car because the price is too expensive. Doesn't that make people sick? Crazy. Let's look at the markets. The yield curve inversion continues, my friends. Look at what's going on. The 3 and the 10, the 5 and the 10 have now inverted. And it looks like it could continue. So we'll see. What is the yield curve inversion? Really quickly, I always want to explain this. It's very important. You take a 30-year bond. You want to you know, extend that over a period of time. That means it's a long period. I want to get a good re uh, return on that. You would think so. And what about a one year? Well, the one year would obviously return less than the 30 year. But what happens when they flip? That's the yield curve inversion that's taking place today. This is coming from Morgan Stanley. Our US cycle indicator is in expansion phase after rebounding extremely quickly in this cycle. So this was during 2020. And I remember showing you this. It's been very accurate. Let me say, this is an extremely accurate indicator coming from Morgan Stanley. And then they, it's the same chart here, just showing you that it's getting late. It's late in the cycle. And they specifically noted within two to four months, the cycle should peak. And then it would take a period of a few months to start heading down. Because you could see if, if you look at the other examples here, uh, if you can see that, it's the biggest the chart gets. Um, it starts to kind of come down and then it goes into the red, which is downturn. Okay, because you never really know if that's a blip or, or you know, a move, a continuation of the move. Duration of recovery to prior cycles peak in months. You compare this cycle, that's the blue, with the average cycle. You could look at this through. I don't know if there's many people interested in it. If you uh, want to check it out, it's right here, just showing you, you know, your earnings and sales and so on. Um, Things are, are are different this time around. That's all I will say. And you could look at the markets from November. I've been talking about November, November, November. I, I, I talked about a thousand times. What's going on? Over on this side, I got some charts that I'm looking at off screen from November time frame. And you can see they were kind of choppy, choppy. And then we went down. But throughout that period, I was telling people who are subscribed to this channel, look at energy. Look at energy, look at commodities, look at commodities, because you don't have to always buy your seven shares of Amazon. Okay, you could buy seven barrels of oil. Do you want to buy that now? Well, if you think the price can go and continue higher. But what about the seven two by fours I was talking about previously? People were saying, oh, deflation is in. The price of lumber is going down. And what happened to the price of lumber? It went up considerably. Okay, anyway, the point is you don't have to always buy into the same things. We need to understand the markets as a whole, the economy as a whole, because if we become a whole brain trader, a whole brain investor, I should say, or in my opinion, it's survival. Okay, because you can't always buy that same thing. You can't always have the same mentality all the time. You will be crushed. Okay, I don't like those 
YouTubers out there who are telling people just dollar cost average into the exact same thing forever and you're going to do just fine. They're doing you a disservice, okay? It doesn't mean you have to sell everything. It just means that where you are putting your money today and where you think it's going to be, let's say, over the next month or the three months or six months, that might change. That might change. And then you can, you know, move it where you think it's it's right. Don't always think of, oh, well, if I sell, there's tax implications and so on. You're worrying about something that hasn't even happened yet. That's not the way it should be as an investor. You've got to put your money in the place it's going to work best for you. Anyway, hope you appreciate this information. I, you know, I'm hope people understand that these videos, it's one after the other after the other. It's a continuation. It's not an essay with a thesis, you know, all, all to it in one episode. It's a continuation. And those who are watching daily get the most out of it. So I do appreciate you tuning in, hearing my rants, hearing my info. I want to thank you for that. Hit that thumbs up button on the way out. It's right down below. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.